Hello and welcome back to guillotined 18th century chemist theater. Today's a quick little lesson about Boyle's Law. We're going to start getting into some of the mathematical gas laws. I'm starting with, with a classic here, the relationship between pressure and volume. Now you pretty much already have a good idea about this because most of you have probably stepped on an empty water bottle, you know, and had the, the um, top pop off. And if you've, you've ever done that, then you've, you've studied Boyle's Law. Created by Robert Boyle. Um, probably considered the father of the modern scientific method. Um, he was the first one to take copious notes, uh, publish experimentation, insist on uh, being able to uh, have repeatable results. Really, really the father of, of what you understand as the scientific method. Among other things, um, you know, alchemist till the day he died. Um, wasn't a big deal back then to be an alchemist because people didn't really understand what atoms were anyway, so it seemed logical that you could do that. Um, but anyway, so today we're going to talk about his, uh, the law attributed to him, and that's the idea that the volume of a gas is uh, inversely proportional to the pressure. And so the idea is as the pressure goes up, the volume goes down. As the volume goes down, the pressure goes up. Uh, pretty, pretty simple idea. And so you just get this equation, P1V1 equals P2V2, where 1 and 2 are different conditions. So Boyle's law is really used for changing conditions. And so you can also think of it as P times V equals a constant. And that helps you understand the math of it. Because again, for P times V to equal a constant, as one goes up, the other one needs to go down. So that helps a lot, you know, understanding that kind of relationship there. And so uh, really the, the best example of this is to maybe think of like a toy syringe. Um, you know, if you put your finger over the top and pull the plunger out, um, you're going to see that uh, due to the fact there's less collisions, the pressure is going to go down inside that toy syringe. And if you uh, squeeze the plunger in, uh, then the pressure is going to go up. Again, just think kinetic molecular theory. Or, again, just dump out a water bottle or a, or a soda bottle or a pop bottle, put the cap back on and step on it. Uh, as, you, as you decrease the volume of that space, uh, the pressure is going to go up, probably popping the top off. You know, so again, very, very simple idea. So what we can do is look at a couple mathematical examples of this. And I've got two for you here. And again, remember, this is under changing conditions. So uh, Balloon Boy and Balloon Dog are back. Um, they, they made a cameo last time. Um, some dog humor there. So <laughs> A balloon has a volume of 4 liters at 100 kilopascals. Uh, at what pressure would the balloon have a volume of 8 liters? Well, let's use common sense. Again, the volume is going up, so the pressure should have to go down. So if the, if the volume doubles, then the pressure should be cut in half. But let's see. So to do one of these problems, always list your relevant information. Then you don't have to go back to the problem. All right. Write down your blank equation. P1V1 equals P2V2. Now I'm going to strongly encourage you to solve for the variable in question. In this case, I set it up so the variable in question was P2. Um, the reason that you want to do this is that, A, of course, it practices good math skills. Uh, but B, what it will also do is set everything up so once you plug your numbers in, it's all set to go. The leaders are going to cancel out right here, and we can set it up and solve it. No intermediate sig figs, no intermediate units. Uh, so, And as, as we thought, it ends up being 50 kilopascals. Um, only one sig fig because uh, 100 kilopascals only has one sig fig. All right. So let's look at another one real quick here little vaudeville humor coming up here. <laughs> so um, you have a uh, 10 liter container under a pressure of 100 kilopascals. If the pressure is increased fivefold, which means five times, what would the new volume be? Well, again, if the pressure is going up five times, the volume should go down five times. So again, list your relevant information. Um, and, now, and, and I'm just using one and two, but remember, you can be descriptive as you want to be, before and after, whatever you want to use uh, those subscripts to help be more descriptive. So P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. In this case, I'm solving for V2 now. Um, so I'm going to divide each side by P2. Uh, I plug in my numbers, and everything's good to go. Kilopascals are going to cancel out, and we have 10 liters left. Um, so then we do the math and we end up with two liters. Again, three sig figs this time because of that. And so these were pretty easy because I kept, um, you know, the volume's consistent, the pressure's consistent, but they could be a little trickier um, if you had to do some conversions. So just make sure the pressures are in the same units, uh, make sure the volumes are in the same units, it doesn't matter what they are, and uh, you're good to go. So that's, uh, that's Boyle's Law. Um, we'll go to Charles Law's next. Thanks for watching and have a great day.